So it's been one year since October the 7th, and in that time we have seen at least 40,000 Palestinians be murdered brutally by Israel in Gaza alone. We have seen Israel continue to annex the West Bank. We have seen Gaza be absolutely flattened to rubble. We have seen Israel start to bomb Lebanon. We have seen Israel looking at expanding its warfare with Iran. And we have seen the West be more and more complicit with the killing of Palestinians and holding up the Zionist entity. So I talk about books on this channel, and from the offset, this channel has always had a political tinge to it, but over the last year, it has become obviously more and more politicized. And I've spoken about plenty of books about Palestine. I was doing that before October of last year. So I wanna give you some more books about Palestine. Many of these I've already spoken about, but you know, if there's a chance for me to talk about these books and a chance for me to give you these books to read and learn more about the plight of the Palestinian people, I will give them to you to read. Obviously, reading isn't going to be the number one solution to helping everything, but it may help you understand, help you learn, help you educate those around you, and help you be a better activist for the Palestinian people. That being said, in the description, there is going to be a link to UNRWA. UNRWA is a United Nations organization that works primarily with Palestine and uh, Palestinian refugees in the surrounding countries. And also, you know, if you can, make sure you go out and organize, make sure you go out and attend protests. Doing something as simple as using your art or your voice to spread awareness works. That's why I talk about it on this channel. I have somewhat of a gift of the gab of talking and, you know, building a connection with audiences. If you're an artist, see if you can make some art. If you are a poet or a singer, try and, you know, make a poem or sing something. If you are someone who can make things with your hands, maybe make something, something that allows you to use your skills to also help these people who are suffering, who these people who I'm sure wish they were as privileged as me to stand here and talk to you about books. I'm sure there are plenty of men and women and children in Gaza, in Palestine, in Lebanon, in everywhere Israel is attacking who wish they could do exactly what I'm doing right now. So try and do something like that. Now let's go and talk about the books. So the first book I'm going to talk to you guys about is 10 Myths About Israel. 10 Myths About Israel is an Ilan Pape book I've spoken about before, but basically it is Ilan Pape going through and debunking some myths that Israel says about itself to kind of justify its existence, starting off from, you know, Israel saying, there was nothing in Palestine prior to us arriving. We made the desert bloom, which is their favorite thing to say, up until uh, basically Israel saying, all of our problems are down to Palestinian resistance groups. Palestinian resistance groups are attacking us for no reason. There is no justification. Pape goes through all of these and debunks them with evidence. So highly recommend this book and highly recommend basically every Ilan Pape book on the subject. Up next is Raja Hadeh's Palestinian Walks. Palestinian Walks is a book that I've spoken about multiple times. And I always say this book frustrates me, not because of Shahada's writing, but because of the topics, because he is talking about how he in the West Bank, talking about the walks he used to take as a child and how his ability to simply go on a walk through his homeland has been eroded because of the illegal settlements Israel has been building in the West Bank for the past God knows how many decades. Can you imagine living and growing up somewhere and not being able to walk through that place because people have illegally built places there and your movement is restricted because these people have illegally supplanted that land that prevents you from living on your land and they have just claimed it as their own. Do you know how just infuriating that must be to just not be able to go on a walk to your local park because these people have said, actually, no, you can't be here. This park is ours now. How angry, how infuriating that must that be? And Shahada talks about these walks he used to take on as a child with his grandfather, with his cousins, with his uncles, with his family, and now he can't do them. And it is infuriating to read that. The Hundred Years War in Palestine has basically become a must-read book for anyone who wants to know or learn anything about Palestine as of late. It basically talks to you about how the Zionist settlers came to Palestine, how their oppression of Palestinians started, how they tried to get rid of the Palestinians from the offset, how that kind of evolved into the 
Zionist entity being formed and how the Zionist entity has waged a complete war against the Palestinian people since its inception. It goes through step by step basically breaking down the different uh, timelines and the chronology of what happens. It's oftentimes the things that uh, pro-Zionist people will leave out, stuff like the you know expropriation of Palestinian land, the worst parts of the Intifada, the a Nakba, the Intifadas, and how Israel brutalized Palestinians over basically peaceful protests, and how the Palestinians then retaliated, and how Israel has basically changed that into being like, see, the Palestinians were violent from the offset. It's almost like the thing we're seeing right now, where Israel will attack its neighbors, will attack Palestinians, and then when Palestinians retaliate, when their neighbors retaliate, Israel cry wolf the western media are like oh poor israel how dare these people do the exact same thing you were doing to them and the fourth and final and far from least thing we'll talk about is culture and imperialism by edward said i want to talk about this because it is basically playing out right now in front of our eyes cultural imperialism is basically said talking about how the colonial entities like the West, most like the US and Israel and its allies have basically created their cultures to benefit their imperialism. All of their cultural um, goods are to benefit their imperialism. He even talks about England in the Victorian era and the industrial era where basically all of their books that were written by these extremely famous authors, ones that we know now, like Rudyard Kipling, they were all written in a way that made colonialism, made empire seem so normal, made it seem like something that is typical and just engraved it into society. He talks about how modern Hollywood basically for, and this book was written in like the early 2090s, but even then, how normalized Arabs being these evil, vicious monsters were in Hollywood, how all of the bad guys were these Arabs, or all of the bad guys were these Russians, and how it's so normalized the killing of Arabs, so normalized the killing of black people, of Russian people, and how that basically wormed its way into the society and the culture. We see that right now where we are seeing hundreds of thousands, tens of thousands, even hundreds of thousands, by some estimates, of people being murdered in cold blood. And the generally society is just like, oh, well, it's just, they're dying. You know, the Middle East is just a violent place where people die. Africa is just a violent place where people die. Who, you know, it's sad they're being killed in their tens or hundreds of thousands, but what are we going to do about it? It's just how it goes. And that's not normal, but it's been so normalized by these Western cultures, by these imperialist cultures, and it's playing out in our very eyes, where it is normal for Palestinians to die, it is normal for the Lebanese to be killed, but it is not normal for anyone to retaliate against that. To retaliate against that makes you the bad guy, and it's... Oh, Saeed writes it so much better than I could ever explain, and that's why I highly recommend it. It's part of his basically trilogy on Palestine. It was the last of the three to be written, but highly recommend it. And those are my recommendations for you. There are probably so many more books you could be reading about Palestine. I have a whole playlist of books about Palestine, which I'm going to have somewhere here and also in the description down below. Also a link to UNRWA is going to be in the description down below. Today, the day this is coming out, will be the 5th of October. If you are in the UK and you see this first thing in the morning when it goes out, there is a national march in London. I am trying my best to get there myself. It is the one year anniversary march. See if you can get as many people to come with you if you are able to get there. Obviously, this is going out the morning of, so it might be difficult for you to get there, but please do try or look for a local protest near you, a local, you know, uh, day of action near you. Make sure you go into all the resources like Palestine Solidarity Campaign if you're in the UK or Friends of Al-Aqsa, and I'm sure there are many other ones. Leave in the description, in the comments down below, you know, your local area, what kind of organizations people can interact with, whether in the US, I don't know, mainland Europe, the Middle East, Asia, Africa, wherever. Try and, you know, Leave some resources down below. Again, 
reading these books isn't going to be the thing that completely changes the plight of the Palestinian people. We have to be doing that. We have to be using our voices, using our skills, using everything available to us to help them. But if these books can help you learn more, be more knowledgeable, help you educate others, that is the goal of this video. Thank you for watching and I hope you can read a book all about Palestine today.